Hi, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of project based billing. So, this is where I have a planned event that happens on a project. So, I'm going into the project module. I am on the open projects. For anybody that's unfamiliar with the project capability, you plan out different tasks, and then within each task are the people, the, the machines, the subcontractors that are gonna perform the work, and that builds up your cost estimate. And then either in a single contract, in some milestone billing, time and material type billing, you bill for the events on that project. So in the case of this project, we have three tasks, we have some cost, and then we have one billable event that is going to take place. The thing that marks the activity as a billable event is this billable line type. With that field set, the system knows that when I hit create sales invoice, this line is going to use a description. And you do wanna be careful here that your planning lines description is what you want on the invoice. So I have description of invoice line as a demo to show you what's gonna happen. Just a single quantity and then a unit price because it's a quantity of one, that's my line amount. So I click create sales invoice. I do have the option of appending to existing sales invoices. So if I turn this toggle off, then I can select an existing sales invoice in my system. In this case, we're just gonna create a new one. So I'll say okay tells me that it's been transferred and then there's a button at the top that can show me a, either a list if there's multiple or the single invoice will open up if there's just one. And you can see description of invoice line is what came over. So it is not based on the task description, it is based on the description of the planning line. So that's just a, a key distinction I want you to make. And then I can simply post this and that will record an invoice amount against this customer. A big thing to take into account, I can't make changes here. So once I've added it to the sales invoice, I can't make changes. The system knows that this is linked back to a project and so if I wanted to make a change, I would go and delete the, the sales invoice. And the system knows that it's been deleted. It knows it's no longer on an invoice. I would come in, edit my planning line and say, okay, this now needs to be $1,200. And then I would create my sales invoice again. So it's the same process, very quick to make those kind of changes. It's not like you're, you're really slowed down a ton and it keeps both the project and the invoicing that you've done in sync. So that's an important distinction there. Now let's take a look at a different example. So if I go back to my project list, we're gonna look at one that has different structure to it, where that one was a single billable line for the entire project. This one has multiple. So underneath the different task structure, I've defined different billing events. And you can even include comments to include on that. Now you do need to be careful here. So if I, if I run the process, it is only running it for the one line that I have highlighted. So if I hit OK, my sales invoice is gonna come back with that single line on the invoice. So when you're running the process, you wanna make sure you do a shift click or you use the little toggle to select more. Once you've highlighted all of your billable lines and you create the sales invoice, then it transfers all of those lines to the sales invoice. So now you'll see both the, the billable event plus the comment lines that went along with it, okay? Now they don't have any pricing to go with them, they're just comments, but that's a way of building that structure. Now if you noticed, we did that for a single task, okay? So I was only underneath my pre-installation requirements, but I have other billable events for this project. So if I wanna bill for an entire project, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the, the project planning lines, which allows me to view all of them. And then I want to come up here and filter. Now you do need to be careful. So I have a, a line that is both budget and billable. I don't usually encourage that type, but I do have one in this case. So when I apply my filter, I can't just apply the, the billable type. It needs to be both billable and budget and billable lines so that that line is included. Now I have all of the billable events that are gonna happen on this project. I simply shift click to highlight all of the lines. 
and then I'm gonna say create sales invoice. And now I'm not just billing for that single task, I'm now billing for every task that is happening on this job. So here's the first one that we looked at before, and now it's added the, the billing lines for those other tasks that we hadn't come across yet, okay? So that's a way of getting a single invoice. Now, if these were planned on different days or different planning dates, then what you would wanna do is you would wanna apply a filter for let's say the next seven days. And I can actually do this for all projects all at the same time where I say show me all the project planning lines within a certain date that have a billable or both budget and billable type and create the sales invoices. And because it knows the jobs are linked to different customers, it will create invoices for each of those customers across all of your projects. So it's a great way to simply highlight everything and then create sales invoice. The system will track it. So there is an invoiced amount and a quantity that's been transferred to an invoice. So you don't have to worry about duplicate billing through your project because the system is tracking all of that information. That's why I'm able to go and delete the sales invoice and recreate it is because the system is tracking that in real time. And so as I then post that invoice, it will know that a certain amount has been invoiced. If I needed to, I could change my quantity and bill more and that would allow me to bill the increment up from whatever I had billed before. Or I could simply create a new planning line to bill for when any additional amount needed. So different ways to do it. It does not matter how your planning lines are created. So whether I create these on the tasks themselves or if these are created through the time and material project journal where I'm posting the entries of who did the work, what material was used, but when I'm making that entry, I'm marking it as billable because I wanna, in a true time and material type billing, whatever work is incurred, I'm gonna turn around and bill for it. And so as I'm recording my actual cost, I can mark them as billable lines so that it builds up my project's cost, but then turns around and gives me something that I can bill for. And so it creates these project planning lines of type billable as I record that cost. And so as long as those lines get created, again, I simply come in, highlight whatever I want to bill for, and hit create sales invoice. So that's it. That's how you do project-based billing. Again, you can do milestones, you can do a single contract, you can do time and material type billing, and it's not just for all projects. It can be on a project by project basis where you decide for that given project how you're gonna bill it. Now there's a whole bunch more that comes into pricing and how the sales price table works with this. All of that's fully integrated. It all works great together. So you're free to explore and build this out as much as you want. If you have questions on Business Central, not just projects, anything across the system, please reach out to our Accent Software support team. We love to help people better utilize their environments and learn more about their software.